Imagine getting 1,000 times more views on your next video using one simple YouTube strategy that anybody can do. The truth is, YouTube is changing and many creators are noticing their views going down. However, other creators are experiencing breakout growth. So in this episode of the Think Media Podcast, we're gonna be looking at some examples from top 1% YouTube creators to find the three ways that they're getting views right now that you can implement immediately on your channel to trigger massive growth. Number one, the mass appeal method. Whenever you sit down to create a YouTube video, it's important to decide how are you going to define success? Like is the purpose of this video to go viral and reach as many people as possible or is it about reaching a much more specific audience? One of the problems with hyper niched content is it has a low likelihood of going viral. That doesn't mean that hyper niche content is bad or that it shouldn't be a part of your overall strategy. But if you want to tap into the viral secrets of the top 1%, I encourage you try the mass appeal method. A great example we can learn from of the mass appeal method is a business channel that's been blowing up ran by Noah Kagan. Noah was actually employee number 30 at Facebook, reporting directly to Mark Zuckerberg, is the genius behind AppSumo.com, and shares a lot of business advice and how to grow a company and how to grow a team on his YouTube channel. Now, an example of one of Noah's older videos is titled, How to Hire Right the First Time. This is a solid, practical video. It's hyper-niched, it's search-based, it's a very clear title, but what it isn't is it isn't about to go viral. Again, with only 10,000 views in six years, it's something that serves a very small group of people. But if you fast forward to today, we can see Noah using the mass appeal method. One of his most viewed videos is titled, Meet the Billionaire That Works a Normal Job, 5.6 million views and still getting almost 700 views per hour. This video got 1,000 times more views than his hyper-niched how to hire video. And one of the common themes we can observe when studying Noah's top videos is that they are all tapping into the mass appeal method. They still apply to a business audience, but they also appeal to a wider audience without being off-brand. One of his videos that got 3.9 million views was about asking 80-year-old millionaires if it was worth it. This, of course, is going to appeal to entrepreneurs, but maybe it's going to relate to somebody that is related to an entrepreneur or someone that is questioning whether their pursuit of more money is even worth it in general. For another example of this, we can look to Layla Hermosi, who is also sharing business advice and leadership advice for people that want to scale companies. So two years ago, she posted a video on how world-class leaders hold employees accountable. This is a great video. It is a hyper-niched video, very practical, and really going to help a specific audience. But I think we can all agree it's never going to go viral. Now, if you fast forward to a video she posted a year ago, it's titled How I Brainwashed Myself to Success. And part of the magic of the video is the thumbnail. It's an early picture of Layla uh, with a little bit more weight added on. It says broke on her forehead. And then fast forward to today where it says $100 million on her forehead. You see an arrow pointing to the transformation that took place. And when we look at the title, How I Brainwash Myself to Success, the video still applies to business owners, people that want to build a company, people that are interested in leadership, but it also has a mass appeal that goes wider than that. And it is her most viewed video with 1.3 million views, 56 times more than that hyper niched search based video. So the goal with the mass appeal method is to find that sweet spot between staying true to your niche while also offering valuable content that appeals to a wider audience. But if you're still wondering how you could apply this to your YouTube channel, let's check out another example. Roger Wakefield, AKA the expert plumber has a YouTube channel all about plumbing education. And some of his practical videos include topics like toilet wax versus rubber which works better, or how to service a water heater, plumbing 101. Again, these are some great videos. Search-based, practical, how-to, hyper-niche, and on his channel, respective to the size of his subscribers, 
these videos got 21,000 views and 5,000 views. Really great, like absolutely worth doing. However, Roger also uses the mass appeal method. If you look at one of his most viewed videos of all time, it's called Real Plumber Tries Awful Plumbing Hacks. It's an entirely different content format that is a challenge, him challenging himself to look at some viral plumbing hacks that he discovered online and then actually put himself into those situations. So he's staying on brand for plumbing, but he's expanding the entertainment value and really the mass appeal of the video topic. And what is the result? Well, that video generated 4.2 million views. That's 840 times more views than his much more practical videos. Another example Roger did is Real Plumber reacts to the biggest plumbing scammers. So he finds some scam videos on the internet, reacts to those, and as a result, he generated 2.3 million views in that video. And the truth is the mass appeal method can be applied to any channel. And I think it's important to understand the concept of VFM. That stands for viral for me. And it simply means this. You may not get as many views as Noah Kagan or as Layla Hermosi, but if you normally get 10 views or 100 views or 1,000, I wanna challenge you to try the mass appeal method to see if you could get 10,000 views. Because if you normally get 1,000, that's 10 times more views by being thoughtful about selecting a topic or a content format that has broader appeal while staying on brand. Now, that is just the first secret of the top 1% that I wanna cover in this episode of the Think Media Podcast. In fact, I have a bonus strategy, so stick around because I've got three more of these coming up for you. But if you're new here, my name is Sean Cannell, and this channel is all about giving you unfiltered YouTube tips for building a profitable channel. And today's episode is brought to you by our upcoming Grow With Video Summit. It is a three-day deep dive YouTube education event with Gary Vaynerchuk, Patrick Bet David, Cody Sanchez, Dave Ramsey, and more. Check out show notes for details about the super affordable ticket prices and everything else that's happening with that. But let's get into strategy number two. So the second secret of the top 1% is the reaction strategy. And for this, let's go back to Roger Wakefield's channel. In fact, we touched on it with one of his most viewed videos that was titled Real Plumber Reacts to the Biggest Plumbing Scammers. One of the things that's so impressive from this video from Roger that not only got over 2 million views, not only got over 800 times more views than some of his practical plumbing tutorials, but it's the fact that it's a React video, meaning he tapped into what we call OPC. Now, to be clear, I just said OPC, not OPP, like naughty by nature, but OPC, which stands for Other People's Content. What's so crazy about the reaction strategy is that because of fair use law, you can actually tap into the power of using OPC, other people's content, to make your own videos. And not only that, in some cases, this content format is easier. It kind of requires potentially a little bit less creativity. But in Roger's case, he still got 800 times more views than when he had to suit up, get ready, and actually like demonstrate how to do something when it comes to plumbing. That's why I think one of the tools in your content creation tool belt should be the React strategy. And this isn't something new. We can look at classic channels like the React channel or Kids React. You know, Mr. Beast even has a channel called Beast Reacts with millions of subscribers built off reacting to all kinds of different things. One example of how powerful this is, is a UK filmmaker named Kai, who has 20,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. But one of the videos he made was called Filmmaker Reacts to Halo Reach, all of the cutscenes. And so this filmmaker reacts to OPC, other people's content of all the cutscenes from Halo, and ended up getting 149,000 views. 
his channel only has 20,000 subscribers. So whenever you punch way above your weight class and get more views than your subscribers, you know you're on to something. And depending on your niche, you can get creative with the reaction strategy. I saw one video titled Agency Owner Reacts to Bad Car Dealership Facebook Ads. Now, this video didn't go viral, but if you think about it, somebody that wants to run ads, maybe you're an agency owner, rather than just making a video on how to run Facebook ads or some practical tips like that, you're actually tapping into the React strategy to educate as well and to attract your ideal clientele. A creator named Dr. Mike made a video titled, Dr. Reacts to the Is Obesity a Choice Debate? So let's look at what he's doing here. He is using OPC, other people's content. He's tapping into a trending and heated topic while other people are debating in this video, he's playing the video and reacting to it and joining the conversation as a solo creator tapping into the reaction strategy. So the question for you is what content could you react to that's related to your niche, that's on brand to something that is directly connected to your channel or adjacent to your channel topic? And what is related to your niche but also could appeal to a wider audience. We're stacking now the mass appeal method and the reaction strategy. But we got to get to secret number three. And remember, I have a bonus strategy for you coming up next. But number three is ethical clickbait. One of the accusations that gets thrown around on YouTube and in social media is the criticism of clickbait to a lot of creators. The mistake people make is that not all clickbait is bad. So let's define the difference between good and bad clickbait. If you title and package your content in a way that's misleading, deceptive, that hurts trust, that over promises and under delivers in the actual video, then that would be bad clickbait. And even if you get the click, it's ultimately gonna hurt your brand and it's not worth doing. On the flip side, if you package your video in a way that's engaging, compelling, honest, accurate, and then it actually over delivers in the video, even if it seems like, oh, that's a little clickbaity, if it's honest and it over delivers and it's accurate, then you absolutely should do that. So this brings us to a great example of this strategy, and that is the YouTube channel, The Diary of a CEO. And one of the geniuses behind the meteoric rise of this podcast is Grace Andrews, their marketing director. And here is the level they take their thumbnails to at the diary of a CEO. On any given episode of their video podcast, they test 100 different thumbnails to optimize the click-through rate. What they do is they try three different facial expressions of the guest that's in the episode, and then they do 20 to 30 different quotes from the episode next to the person's face, deciding which one ultimately gets the highest click-through rate. Now, quick disclaimer, this is a secret of the top 1% of YouTube channels that obviously has a staff and a budget and a lot of resources. My point in sharing this is not that you can start creating 100 different thumbnails and split testing all of them, but my point in sharing this is that the intentionality that goes into baiting the click, optimizing your videos in such a way that the title, the thumbnail, the topic, and every detail actually baits the person that's on YouTube to click the video, but at the same time delivers on the promise that you're making in that thumbnail and title. And of course, if you wanna do a little sneaking around, you can always go to the diary of a CEO, look at the videos posted on the channel and learn a lot from their titles and the text that's in their thumbnails. There are four words in the thumbnail of the video that we're talking about, and here they are. They're lying about calories. Now, I don't know about you, but this has actually triggered me. Like, wait a minute, is the information about calories that I thought I knew wrong? Who's lying? Who are they? And what we're discovering here is some powerful psychological triggers that Diary of the CEO is using that you can apply for your own videos as well. For example, the phrase you've been lied to triggers curiosity and it triggers an emotional response. And a few things are happening. One, intrigue. Lied to implies hidden information, deceit, and potential injustice, triggering curiosity and the desire to uncover the truth. Number two, anger and disbelief. The accusation of being lied to evokes negative emotions like anger, betrayal, disbelief, and it pushes viewers to find out who lied and 
Why? So now think about this. You have a guest on. They don't even say who the guest is because you probably wouldn't know this scientist, either would I by name. So they call the title of the video, The Weight Loss Scientist Says You've Been Lied To About Calories, Dieting, and Weight Loss. You are now pulling in viewers that maybe have no knowledge of the actual person into some subject matter that maybe I wouldn't have been that pumped to click on it, but because of the way it's positioned, if you will, the ethical clickbait, intrigue is triggered, anger and disbelief is triggered. Another one is confirmation bias. If viewers already suspect deception, the title confirms their suspicions, making them feel validated and more likely to engage. But we can go on. You've been lied to also appeals to the hero mentality. So it's the victim mentality, meaning viewers may connect to the feeling of being deceived, putting themselves in the victim role and seeking resolution, or the justice seeker, which the title positions the viewer as the potential hero who will expose the lie and bring justice. Like I'm gonna learn information in this video that I can share with my friends and family and at that weekend barbecue because I'm being lied to about calories and I need to figure out this information. So this appeals to the desire to be informed and to make a difference. Now you might be thinking, wow, there's some people playing the YouTube game at a level higher than I could even imagine. And you'd be correct. The top 1% aren't playing around when it comes to understanding human psychology, understanding emotions, and weaving these strong psychological triggers into their titles and their thumbnails and the packaging of their videos. Now, as I promised you, we're gonna get into a fourth bonus strategy in just a second, but I wanna look at one other example of ethical clickbait, and here's the title of a powerful video. I spent $1,000 on Pinterest ads for my small business. Was it worth it? Now, there's a couple things we can learn from this. One, this is the challenge strategy again. Instead of doing a hyper niched how to video of how to run Pinterest ads for business, not very exciting and definitely sounds like it's not entertaining, we're stepping into the challenge format of someone else who's got their own skin in the game and their own stakes in the game, their own money. We have an open loop of what happened in this story. Now we're, okay, so you risked $1,000 of your own money. What lessons did you learn? Did it pay off? Did you make money? Did you lose money? And so what we can see here is a very click worthy video on the thumbnail itself. It says, are Pinterest ads worth it? Two weeks results. And so what I want to encourage you to do is not throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to avoiding clickbait. I think you should aggressively try to clickbait viewers. Just make sure you do it ethically in a way that actually delivers in the video, delivers on the promise, is compelling, is honest, and is engaging. Now, in just a second, we're gonna land the plane on that bonus strategy that I have when it comes to the secrets of the top 1%. And this is actually a part of eight strategies that I'm gonna be teaching during just one of my sessions at our upcoming Grow With Video Summit. If you wanna learn the best strategies for starting and growing a successful YouTube channel and the latest viral growth tips from today's top video experts like Patrick Bet David, Gary Vaynerchuk, Cody Sanchez, Ali Abdal, Dave Ramsey, and so many more. Just click the link in the show notes and it'll take you to a page where you can secure your ticket to this three-day event. During this three-day event, you're gonna have a chance to connect with other entrepreneurs and business-minded content creators inside of our custom app where you can experience the giveaways and the gamification and all of the relationships. And I'm also gonna be teaching through our seven-step YouTube success system. So this event is gonna be packed with value. I wanna encourage you, get your ticket and don't miss the Grow With Video Summit. Which brings us to our last secrets of the top 1% strategy, and it's this, form a YouTube Jedi Council. What does this mean? It means create or join a peer network of like-minded YouTube marketing enthusiasts. And the power of this strategy was revealed in an interview that Joe Rogan did with Mr. Beast, where Mr. Beast was sharing the origins of his initial success. And he said this, that most of his growth came after he graduated high school. He found four other lunatics, in his words, small YouTubers, and they talked every single day for 1,000 days 
in a row. At the time, Skype was their software for hosting this, and they were essentially doing daily masterminds on Skype. And the way he put it was, we did nothing but hyper study what makes a good thumbnail, a good video, good pacing, and how to go viral. And at the time, Mr. Beast reported having 10 to 20,000 subscribers, but as a result of being inside of a YouTube Jedi Council, he grew to over 1 million subscribers in a short time. This reveals to us the difference of trying to grow by yourself on YouTube versus growing with a support group of other passionate YouTube geeks that are studying all the details and also making mistakes that you can learn from. And one of the examples Mr. Beast gave was he said that if you make 20 mistakes in two years, then it takes you two years and 20 mistakes to learn all of those lessons. But if you had four other people with you and everybody's making mistakes, one person makes five mistakes, one person makes five mistakes, the other person makes five mistakes, well, then you can compress the time. And he said you can essentially go five times faster because everyone's making mistakes. Your other peers are saying, no, don't do that. I tried it. It didn't work. No, don't do that. I tried it and didn't work. Do this instead. And the whole thing creates a 5X accelerator simply by linking arms with other passionate marketing, social media, and YouTube geeks that are obsessed with winning and the details of YouTube success. So I want to encourage you, if you're serious about YouTube success, don't do it alone. I understand when you're starting, you don't have a network yet. You might wonder where can you find one? And so your options basically are build one from scratch by like Mr. Beast, find some friends and start jumping on Zoom and chopping up your content together or join one that already exists, finding an event or a group or a Facebook group or Discord or Circle. There's all kinds of different options out there. The bottom line is this, your circle determines your success. Harvard Research actually did a study that determined 95% of your success or failure in life comes down to the people that you associate with. So form or join a YouTube Jedi Council, start using the mass appeal method, try the reaction strategy, and please, on your next video, make sure to use ethical clickbait. If you enjoyed this podcast and are ready for some deep dive YouTube strategy, just go to thinkmasterclass.com to get access to my one hour on demand YouTube strategy class. You'll be looking over my shoulder as I share my best tips and you can watch it on demand right now at thinkmasterclass.com.